Hey everyone, welcome to the recap of The Walking Dead Universe. We are here live every week to discuss the latest episodes. You can catch our recaps at any time, available on most podcast platforms. Get new and past episodes for free in the app of your choice, including YouTube. For those of you joining us live today, thanks for taking time out of your evening to be here. I am Tamara Ford, and I love a good TV show and a good book, of course. So if you'd like to reach out to me, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at The Recap Pods. And if you're into books, you can also find me at Shelf Addiction. Joining me is show co-host Lisa. Welcome, Lisa. Hey, Tamara. Hey, everyone. My name is Lisa Orban. I am an author. I am also the founder of Indies United Publishing House, and I love all things pop culture. If you want to connect with me online, you can find me everywhere at Lisa Orban Author. All right. So before we get going, as always, we want to remind you that we would love your participation in this conversation. So if you are listening live on YouTube or Facebook, do hit us up in the comment section. If you are catching this on a replay, you can still comment on any platform or you can even call us using the voicemail link in the show notes. We want to hear from you and possibly include your comments in an episode. So if you are new here, we are laid back in our review style, right, Lisa? Absolutely, Tamara. This is a conversation, not a dissertation. Yeah, no scene by scene breakdowns here. We jump around. Huge spoiler alert for every show, every episode up until yesterday's. That's right. Episode. We do not go forward, even though we can. I know. So if you're cool with that, <coughs> this is the place for you. Do not post any spoilers for the next episode. <laughs> We're going to jump right on into it. All right. So we're talking about Fear of the Walking Dead. Season seven, episode ten. Woohoo! Yeah. Woohoo! So that, that sounds excited. Do you want to go first, or you want me to? <laughs> okay. You know what? I will let you do the honors. I have my list of things, but I know we probably have some of the same things. So you go first. Okay. I'm gonna say, while I did enjoy this moderately more than I did the first episode, which really sucked. Um this I, I don't know what they're what they're doing at this point so we know at this point now charlie's going to die you know I, well is she let's yeah let's pause there is she though we know that they have not stuck into they have not stuck to the rules of radiation already well we know that but everyone at, at least at this point you know charlie and um everyone else is basically saying we're really sorry you're gonna die you know so i don't know they this this show has been good at all the twd shows are good at misdirect so i'm not sure i think she'll it's a possibility she'll skate her way through she might but at this point i you know i don't know but then again could her radiation levels have been any worse than um what what's her name went through when she was on the radioactive island mm -hmm. you know so I, I don't know i mean the fact that she went from apparently being okay to not being okay because she was in that building doesn't make any sense whatsoever to me. Actually, nothing in this episode made a whole lot of sense to me. Well, it definitely had its, you know, YA vibes. If y'all oh, don't yeah. know what YA is, it means young adults. Um, so, okay. So a couple of things off the top of my head that rubbed me the wrong way was figuring out how, how old Charlie was. I'm like, oh, she's 12, about to turn 13? Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll take it, whatever. But knowing that the actress is a couple years older than that and she looks it, I'm like, she don't look like she's 12, about to be 13. She looks 15 or 16. Yeah. And she is. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to let that go. And I'm like, even the guy playing, what, Ali? I'm like, uh -huh. he's probably 19 or 20 playing a 16-year-old or whatever, 15-year-old. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, he look older too. But I'm going to try to let that go and <laughs> get out of my mind about that. So that was like one of the first things that triggered me as soon as they started saying how old they were and stuff. Yeah, I'm like, okay. Okay, Karina says he's 19. Well, that's three years, four years older than 15, right? He was toting he was 15 Yeah, on the show. He don't look 15. He looks 19 mm -hmm. <laughs> or a little older. But um, so beyond that, 
and all the YA vibes, the show was okay. The episode was okay, but I it, really I, didn't. I didn't love it. I didn't love the romance stuff. I, I got to tell you, this this episode reminded me so much of um, uh, the World Beyond kind of episode. You know what I mean? Is is kind of campy. The I the 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 dialogue was really lackluster. Mm-hmm. It was kind of I mean there was a there was a focus but the focus didn't make a lot of sense to me um I mean number one why would why would Morgan send her to go infiltrate all right and maybe if we'll she, find next, next week you know and, and if she's really that good how did she get caught pilfering a horse I know you know, I know. what I mean and the, you know, I mean, and then that whole thing of, you know, letting her out to go get her thing, you know, she could have just, you know, she either could have left and used that as her escape or, you know, cause she could have left, she could have left Ali at any point in time if she really wanted to, you know, we know that she's sneaky. you know, but then, oh no, I'm going to confess and tell you. But it's because I have feelings for you. Are you kidding me? You've known this kid for like, what, 20 minutes? Well, that's why, hey, kids, fall, insta-lust, insta-love. They fall all over each other real quickly. <laughs> Cleo says in the comments, the episode oh, yeah. was boring as fuck. Yes, girl. Yeah, it was. Yeah. You know, I my attention kept drifting. I'm like, okay, why are we collecting butterflies? I know. What's up with that? I mean, it's like stupid errands like just go have this kid collect butterflies for what because i like to look at them it's so stupid yeah you know so i mean you know so we've got butterfly collections going on and i I don't know i i didn't find anything in this episode compelling no it you know the the dialogue didn't didn't interest me most of it just seemed either redundant or just lame did this episode make you feel any kind of way toward charlie like i never really liked her character i'm like oh she's such a brat like what is she doing she can't be trusted she'll do whatever and I'm like, well, with them making her have radiation, which, by the way, I thought was just like a ploy at first. I really didn't I believe did too. she really had radiation poisoning. So, um, but with that, maybe they're making us want, you know, feel they're trying to make us like her a little bit. I don't know. I mean, feel and, bad for her. You know, and then the whole thing of you know they they needing to turn off the light so that they could get in and. I don't know the whole thing. It was just, you know, okay. So these, both of these kids have been around for years and apparently Ali has been on his own for a a good portion of this time is, I mean, his dad apparently just recently died. Yep. But at the same time, he has been out in in this world, you know, he hasn't been swaddled or anything. And, And the fact that he is this, gullible stupid you know without foresight oh i'm just gonna go up on the roof and no one's gonna suspect anything it's you love know? he's love and not paying attention to what he's doing <laughs> i mean he has extreme guilt for leaving someone that needed him so now he's like i'm gonna be there i'm gonna do the right thing i'm gonna help you <coughs> to my own detriment yeah i mean i i, I just didn't Again, I mean, you know, Charlie is supposed to be sneaky. She wasn't, you know, we have seen her do some really underhanded sneaky things. Um, And she's usually pretty slick about it. Hell, she's like, killed people. Let's not forget. Yeah. You know, but now she's like almost, almost helpless in a certain way. Um, And I, I don't know. I mean, everything, it was just like. So when she was killing the walkers, she was like superhero type. When, you know, it came to everything else, she was completely incompetent. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I just, it, it, 
nothing about this episode just settled right. It just, it, it, it didn't even feel like, it was like the characters were being written by strangers. Yeah, it was definitely like this one-off anthology feelings, you know, in a box kind of story. Like it's totally cut off from everything else. Yeah. I, I just, I, I yeah. don't know. I don't understand it. And, I, and I've even, and then, you know, I watched the previews for next week and next week's episode just looks even more bizarre. Yeah. So, okay. Oh, Chloe is funny. <laughs> oh, he didn't begin. <laughs> and you know that speaking of Allie dying, that is one more gripe that I had with this episode. I mean, this is the second episode in a row. You introduce us to someone new and they die in the same episode. Like, mm -hmm. what is up with this? Well, you, we had the, the ranger that initially was killed, you know, well, killed, thrown overboard, jumped, I don't know, mm -hmm. off the roof. And then we had Ali. And I mean, and why go to this building? Apparently everyone's dying of radiation poison at this building. Why go back to this building? Don't tell me there there's no other buildings in this area without the, this is the only one with a working elevator or a, a elevator parts. Yeah. seriously oh, um, yeah, will too yeah karina mentions don't forget when they did it to will so will happened on the first half of this season mm -hmm. but since we've been back episode nine and ten they've done it again so three times this season they've done it with brand new characters and di they die in the same episode yeah and they all get thrown off the roof yep which is wild i'm like okay so except for the last guy last episode he um got killed while playing a bagpipe so well yeah well i meant inside the tower though everyone just yeah. seems to die from being thrown off the i don't know about you but i would never go to that roof no never ever would i ever go up there because it's not like it's a death sentence for real <laughs> um hey can but, you hit me on the roof why you know <laughs> yeah i'll meet you in the basement okay <laughs> exactly first floor maybe yeah um i yeah i don't know i mean and, and, and here's the thing if they really wanted to kill Strand. Yeah. It would not be that difficult. Well, they're not going to kill him. I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah. If they really wanted to push him aside, if they really wanted to kill him, it would not be that difficult. No, it wouldn't be. I mean, honestly, Alicia could have killed him already. Right. Alicia could have killed him. Um, you know, Hell, but um, even Morgan could have killed him. Remember, he saved him in the elevator thing. He could have Yeah, I know, him. and he shouldn't have. Uh -huh. So Should've they keep wanting to give Strand a try. They keep wanting to do it. And it's like, you are not learning anything because y'all keep giving him chance after chance. And he's proving he's the exact same person. Yeah. You know, and in and, and that conversation um, between, uh, no, I can't, it's not Grace, but... Uh, um oh john and um yeah what's her damn name lord have uh, mercy come um, on karina help us out i know um but anyway that the conversation i can't believe you're on his june time. lord have mercy why did it, i forget her name okay <laughs> june yeah between june and between june and john i mean you know, i can't believe that you're standing up to uh, up up for him that way Oh, I don't really mean it. I'm just trying to be on his side because, you know, this way I could get on his good side. And all I can think of is June. You know, you've got a you 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 got a whole array of chemicals at your disposal. There, there's, you know, kill him. Well, you know? we know she won't do that. I mean, well, maybe she might now. She seems like she's singing a different tune now. But she's been scared. She openly admitted it. You know, there were times where she could have killed Virginia, but she didn't. Remember? Like I know. She's... But then then she straight up just shot. You know, just shot her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's weird. I think June is like has to be pushed to the limit. And maybe in this case, having that 15-year-old kid thrown off the roof is her limit. And now that, you know. 
um, Charlie is dying of radiation, maybe she's like, oh, I can do something now, you know? I, yeah. You know, June does, I, I don't know. I, I don't understand June at, at this point. <laughs> Karina is correct. In the comments, she says, if June has stood by her husband, he would not be dead right now. Exactly. You know, I mean, she goes, yeah. she goes from like this complete hard ass half the time to this, you know, wibbly bowl of jelly. Oh, I can't do anything. Oh, I'm going to kill you dead. Oh, I can't do anything. Oh, you're going to die. I just, oh, come on. Yeah, you she's know, kind I mean, of wishy-washy. You know, she straight up blew, blew Dakota away. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, she just, I don't know. Stuffs it down I, until she breaks and then she does something rash and just murders people. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you she know, does. So, and, you know, the I don't know. I mean, I I just I don't like where how they're setting this whole season up. It, it just it, it does not bode well. So let me tell you some of the issues <laughs> I have with how they're treating Charlie's character. So yeah. hypothetically, if she dies, okay, I think they are robbing us of a volatile reunion between she and Madison. Mm -hmm. because she doesn't know that Nick is dead, right? Madison right. does not know that. She does not. And when she finds out Charlie killed her, killed him, excuse me, she's going to, you know, that could be a whole thing. But if they kill her before she returns to the show, then that's going to be like, what happened? I don't remember. You know, so... Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Uh, I just want to comment on Cleo's. She said, uh, so I'm guessing June forgave Charlie for killing her husband. No, no, no. Charlie's not the one that um, that killed John. That was Dakota. Yeah, that was Dakota that um, pushed him mm -hmm. into the water. Mm -hmm. That yeah. wasn't Charlie. That was Dakota. Yeah. So just thought I'd clarify that real quick for you, Cleo. All right. Anyway, go back to so, I mean, I feel like if that's what they're trying to do is to kill her before Madison comes, I think that's kind of like a cop out. I don't want, I don't like it. Um, and I feel like if she doesn't die, which I think is a slim chance, I do think it's a slim chance since there's no continuity when it comes to radiation. Right. Um, what is she going to be? Oh, I've learned my lesson. Now I'm a good kid because I almost died. So then maybe she'll get redemption and then move forward with another bland ass storyline. I don't know. Well, I just I don't mean, like how they're doing her character period. Like she's been in the background for so long now. And now you're yeah. going to bring her to the front forefront for what? Why? Well, I, you know, I mean, the thing of it is, is, I mean, she's kind of had her arc already. You know, she was, you know, Madison took her in. She looked like the sweet, innocent kid. Then it turned out that she belonged to that, you know, traveling menagerie, you know, that then wiped out the, the stadium, which honestly doesn't make, still doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, and, you know, and then she, you know, she killed um, the heroin addict. Nick, your favorite. Nick. Yeah, my favorite. And uh, which is sad. Yeah. And and now she's kind of like, I don't know. It's like she saw, she saw the light after she killed Nick, and she hasn't been really terrible since. But I don't know. I just I, I've never really warmed to her character. Um. But I I don't know. I just the whole. So thing does is just that stupid. mean I'm trying to? I forget how much time has passed on this show. So was she 11 years old or 10 years old when she killed Nick? Uh, I don't know. Probably about 10. I'm like, because she's a child killer. She's just killing people. I'm like, mm -hmm. dang, girl. Well, but even when she was little, little, you know, when they first showed her up on Matt, you know, she rolled up on Madison's doorstep, you know, we found out that she had killed people already. Yeah. You know, so she was, you know, so she... I don't know. And now all she wants to do is learn how to bowl and kiss a boy. Mm -hmm. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, I could see 
Like if she were like bullshitting him the whole time, you know, to get him to do what she wants. Like if she was manipulating him, that would make more sense to me than this whole other crap. Yeah. Well, I mean, not to mention, I mean, you know, she's talking, you know, because she would have been what, two, three, something like that when the world collapsed. Mm-hmm. So, you know, she's grown up in this world. She doesn't really, I mean, she's seen the the, the relics of it. But, you know, I've, I've always wanted to learn how to bowl. Why? Why? Did, mm-hmm. did you read a book about it? Did someone tell you about it? Is there a particular reason, you know, that bowling would have any significance to you? Um, yeah. I mean, legitimately. So, I mean, the fact that, you know, she's re- wa- waxing nostalgic over things that, in, in context, she probably has, wouldn't really, I mean, wouldn't really have a lot of affinity for. I mean, again, bowling, you know, even in current, you know, times, bowling is one of those sports that's way down there on the list. You know, we're all aware of what bowl, what bowling is, but it doesn't mean a whole lot to most people. I do wonder, though, like, if you think about it in, like, like you said, so she was a toddler, right? Mm -hmm. when the world ended no tv no radio i mean other than seeing the word bowling maybe on the outside of a a building she doesn't know bowling is like who who just says oh i I, here's bowling and it was so fun and you never got to play like what i don't think that would come up right i mean i could see waxing nostalgic for maybe like i don't know baseball you know, or TV, movies, an amusement park even, Um, you know, because she did read, you know, she's been a reader this whole time. Um, Mm -hmm. We know that. Uh, They first found her in a library. If I remember correctly, wasn't it a library? I'm not sure. Maybe. I don't remember. And, you know, so, but, you know, she, she had that book that Charlie gave her and stuff. So, you know, things like that that would be in books that she may have read, like amusement parks or baseball or things like that I could see. But I don't know. Bowling just seems bowling. like a weird thing. It was, it's an odd thing. Like, honestly, I think I've gone bowling. Like, I can count on one hand in my entire life that I've gone bowling. And it was always because someone else asked me to do it. <laughs> not, like, not like there's anything wrong with bowling, but it's just not a really common thing that everyone wants to do so i don't know Mm. whatever and i guess now she's boy crazy i guess Uh, suddenly she's going to turn 13 and now she likes boys i guess well you know that's kind of normal but you know of course you know they they killed off her the one kid we know that's around her age um Mm -hmm. There's this not a lot interesting. of interesting. Karina says in the comments, the only reason I'm not mad at Charlie having her own episode is because fans have been terrible to her since Nick's death, literally sending death threats to her house. That's unfortunate for the actress. It really is. But I want to know, did, did this show, did this episode make you like Charlie's <laughs> character any better? Do you actually feel differently about Charlie right now? Um, because I don't. This did not change my view of Charlie as a character. Not so, mine either. I, I mean, wonder... like I said, I, I all I got really was that you know world beyond vibe with it. It was, I don't know, the the, the writing was just really off. The whole storyline was just off. Yeah, it, it, it didn't it didn't make any sense. I I can't even imagine why Morgan would think it'd be a good idea to send Charlie in like that. I mean, legitimately. I mean, honestly, there might have been some truth to her reason. So, like, maybe she talked him into it because she did want to get a look at the inside and see if that was something she could work out. That would be truthful to who her character seems to be. You know what I'm saying? Maybe she would get in there and then double cross Morgan if she could find a way to stay. Now, the one thing I'm not I'm not understanding is, okay, so they're letting these people in and out of the building. And I, I guess they're blindfolding them or something so they can't see. Now, what I could, I, I could see of Charlie, you know, because, you know, supposedly she's got a really good innate sense of direction. 
you know, if she has a general location of where they started, mm -hmm. could retrace her steps. But that didn't seem to, you know, that didn't seem to be part of this little fiasco. Mm -hmm. um, you know, her going up, you know, looking through the horse for, you know, for plans to get in. That doesn't make any sense. Why didn't she just hang back and follow them? Mm -hmm. that, that would have made more sense. To do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, basically just hang out and, you know, keep an eye on them. And, you know, she's small enough that she could have blended in with the scenery. Mm -hmm. And it's not like you can see real well when you've got one of those masks on. She yeah. could have followed him all the way back. Oh, yeah. he was, And plus, he was so absorbed in catching that butterfly. So... Mm -hmm. Hmm. So, I don't know. It, it just, like I said, the, the whole premise of this thing just doesn't make any sense. If if Charlie is as sly as, you know, everyone w was going on about her being, how easily she got caught, how she got caught, you know, everything else, it, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It doesn't. And then the whole scene... I'm like just more mush, right? <laughs> the scene with you know, um, where Ali like lets the butterflies loose for her birthday. He's uh -huh. like, oh, "Happy birthday!" I'm like, "Oh my god!" So I'm like, I cannot. And you know what? I was reading this um review earlier, and someone nailed it. They nailed it. If you've ever seen or read "Fault in Our Stars" by John Green, mm -hmm. it had that same vibe. The characters are laying on the floor, looking at the, you know, uh, sky or whatever. But instead of like looking at sky, they're looking at butterflies. And instead of cancer, the girl has radiation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it kind of does have that feel kind of like they stole a scene or, you know, something like that. I, I don't know. Unless that's just typical young adult fashion for romance, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Well, and, and, and Cleo's brought up too, you know, how are they getting in and out of this tower with horses without attracting any attention? I mean, if they're getting in and out of this place with horses, you know that that tunnel has got to be big. It's got to be. Yeah. You know, it's not the like The only thing I can think is it's on the opposite side of the building, but I thought they had walkers surrounding the building, didn't they? Or was they it just do. on one side of the building? Yeah, is near what I how I assume they initially were getting in and out was it was like an underground parking garage. And that may be what it is, an underground parking garage that you know that they've tunneled out or something. But again, you know, it, it wouldn't for the walkers not to be attracted to, to what's going on, it would have to be at least a mile away from the entrance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I mean, it's not like they're leading these horses through the sewer. They're too big. Yeah. I th I don't think um, it's in their best interest to never explain to us, us how that's done. They're probably going to leave us in the, you know, the dark on that, the logistics of that. I can't believe they tell us because they just want us to just believe that's what, you know, they've got some kind of secret tunnel or secret out that no one knows about and we're just supposed to accept it. <laughs> yeah. Just accept it. You know, and, and we know now that John is going in and out of the building freely. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, he could, he could get in contact with Morgan. You could tell him how to get in the building. Yeah. I mean, to the point where Ollie's just calling him on the, the speaker. I mean, you know, the little walkie, uh -huh. like he's calling him on his cell phone, John, you there? <laughs> Like, yeah. what? I need you, man. I need you. I know. And then he even says to him later, I'm it's good you called me. I'm like, what is this your personal cell line? Like, what's happening? Right. So I, I don't know. Like I said, I just there wasn't a whole lot about this episode. I and there wasn't much to the episode, honestly. Not really. No, it was very um like the last one. It was very about like this one small group of people, mostly Charlie and Ollie. With a couple people floating around that perimeter and that's it yeah all at the tower mostly with the exception of the excursion for um parts and that's it yeah and and really is the elevator that important 
It's not. Well, I don't know. How tall is the building? At least at least five stories, at least. Yeah. Um, so I can see why you prefer an elevator, but I'm sure you'd get used to walking five flights of stairs. One would assume. I mean, well, I mean, it, and elevators take a lot of freaking electricity. Yeah. I mean, the you know, running an elevator is not Well, cheap. Wendell would need an elevator. Yeah, he would. Unless he just stays on one floor. Yeah. Um, you know, but again, I mean, it, it's still, I don't know. I mean, an elevator is so energy intensive to keep and maintain. You know, they have horses, you know, there's honestly no reason why they couldn't just hook it up to a wrench, wench. Come you on, know, well, Strand has that um, champagne life taste you know he's like i want everything this place is you know the place to be and we have all the things and this is you know the best it's so of swank. Course we, we must have a working elevator yeah it's swank exactly <laughs> <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. so what do you think about howard i mean <coughs> howard <coughs> i felt like before that he would just do whatever Strand said. I didn't think he had a mind of his own for whatever reason. I just never thought he would be swayable or he would right. have a difference of opinion. But now he's like not even being neutral. He is like, I am doing what Strand would want me to do. I, I am can't. Strand's man. I am the best man. I follow his orders to the letter. I do. I act like him. I am his proxy. I would do what he does, which includes throwing people off the roof. I can't. Yep. Although I, I will say that I did get kind of a little bit of a tickle out of June going, here's the thing though, out of the two of us, uh, Strand needs me more. <laughs> which is a fact. That which is, is a fact. fact. And that's why he backed off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I did get a, I got a little bit of a giggle out of that one, but you know, honestly, he should have been able to do that math all on his own. I know, because if he did something to June, he might be the next one to be thrown off the roof. Right. Because as yeah. far as Strand's concerned, having June there is a big feather in his cap because now they have the only doctor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, speaking, I keep calling him Strand, and I think I've always called him Strand, but I noticed <laughs> in this episode... Everyone was calling him Victor. It was just Victor. Did anybody else notice that? Mm -hmm. Like they weren't really calling him Strand. They were saying Victor, Victor, Victor. I'm like, hmm, are they trying to like change how we talk about him or what we call him? I don't know. Maybe it was just an oddity. I don't, well, maybe. Be, I don't know. I mean, you know, we, we've all pretty much everyone's always called him Strand before. Mm hmm. Um, but maybe now that he's fearless leader, you know, he, he's looking for a more personal touch. Mm. I don't know. Call me Victor. I said, that's right. <laughs> that's it. Good day, sir. <laughs> no, I said I, good day. I know. And, right? <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting. I don't know. I guess they've kind of like laid a couple tidbits. Um, I'm curious to see what next week's episode holds. I hope it's a lot more exciting than this one. Yeah, because I got to tell you, we're only like 34 minutes into this episode here that we're talking about it. I'm like, I, I don't have anything really else to say. That's the thing about having these compartmentalized episodes. The, the plot is so small that there's not a lot to talk about. It's like, yeah, it's still the same amount of time. But there's not a lot of things happening. You know what I no. mean? There's a lot well, there's of... There's so much empty space. I mean, we. Yeah. I, I guess we could talk about, I don't know, the building and, you know, the the uh, the scavengers and stuff. But, I mean, the, all of that's pretty bleh. You know, I mean, it's not really worth a deep dive there was, examination. There was a lot of meandering and, like, extras. Like, thinking about that time... In the room when they're talking about the butterflies and kissing. And he's like, oh, putting a blanket around her. I mean, that was minutes and minutes of that. Yeah. Um, you know, even when they're bowling, there's minutes and minutes of that. <laughs> or, you know, it's like they had a lot of things just taking up a bunch of time. Mm -hmm. Right. That were the same thing. It didn't really affect anything else. 
you know, the meandering know. on the horse and the whole let's go catch a butterfly, which it's just dumb. Yeah. You know, I mean, and the fact that that Howard and this whole group of rangers came out to, to check on him while he was out butterfly hunting, which, again, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I, I don't know. I mean, the the. The dialogue was lackluster. There really wasn't a lot of it, you know, not really uh, outside of the, the, the two kids being sappy with each other mm -hmm. and nothing really got moved along as far as, it, you know, except for Charlie maybe dying now. Yeah. And I guess also that little bit of thing with John where maybe he might be trying to become, you know, the next, you know, sidekick Mm -hmm. for strand it seems like he's trying to get it gonna try to get in his ear so maybe that's a little bit of groundwork but it was really yeah, just he, a sentence right yeah and even june that's said I, I tried that with virginia and it didn't work mm -hmm. you know so yeah i i, I don't know so karina know. says episode 11 was fire god i hope so because this was just a wet blanket yeah yeah you know what? Like, I just can't. I can't with any of this. This radiation poisoning, I can't with it. I cannot. I don't know. Just something about it rubs me the wrong way. And, you know, we talked about this earlier in the season with them removing the mask in some places, keeping them on in other places. Like, where is it dangerous? Where is it not? I mean, how she wasn't even in that building very long. And she so, wasn't in the building any longer than he was. Right. And he had his mask off at times. Well, she did say we should check you mm -hmm. as well, but it didn't matter because he was dead anyway. So I don't know. Meh. Oh, uh, let's see. Karina says we should have, they should have started with 11. Hmm. And Cleo agrees. Yeah. Mm hmm. So. Well, I guess we'll have to see. Um, maybe I'll watch it tomorrow because I have to watch Outlander tonight. <laughs> oh, I just finished watching that earlier. Oh my gosh, see? Yeah. Actually, that's got a lot going on right now. You guys in the audience, do you watch Outlander? It's wild right now. <laughs> Sounds like I haven't missed anything at all. You haven't, Grimes Girl. No, you have not missed anything, honestly. Um, there's not a lot going on with this show. Uh, and we talked about everything. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right now I'm sitting here going, so do we want to talk about another TV show? Or should we no. just say? We it, don't want to do that, but I, I, we don't want to mesh our shows. So Yeah, I know. I know. Although I, I, I do want to say, so I, I, I have been trolling um, a little bit for like the first two episodes on uh, Fear the Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. And pretty much the consensus all the way around from every place I've read is just what is wrong with 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 these writers? Why why aren't they even firing these writers and finding new ones? You know. Oh, it's I know. Terrible. Like honestly, all the usual <laughs> suspects hate it. So like I usually check out the article on Forbes, Entertainment mm -hmm. Weekly. Um I usually check out one more. I think it's TV Line. You know, there's a couple of places I check on the net every week. And the mm -hmm. consistency across all of those was that the, the reviewers hated it. So, oh, yeah, they all hate it. You know, so I was like, well, good. It's not just me. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, honestly, they're just trashing like the <laughs> the EW article is really trashing it bad. I'm like, damn, they really hated it. But I don't think we I don't think we disliked it as much as they did. Um, But I do feel better knowing that other people have similar thoughts as us. Yeah. And we're the the wet blanket as you say <laughs> well and i mean because again this they've got to pick they've got to if 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 amc is going to continue on with their walking dead you know worlds you know the it, as soon as the walking dead ends fear the walking dead will become their their flagship mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and at this point it it, it doesn't warrant you know, that, that kind of attention, it, it just doesn't, um, yeah. it's, it's getting boring and it's, you know, since they, they set off the, the nukes, you know, they, they've really jumped the shark on a lot of things. And I don't know. I just, I, I want them to 
pull their, you know, get their shit together and, and, and write something cohesive, you know, say, okay, this is our arc, you know, this we're, we're trying to get from point A to point B. And so, and, and have someone there that just slaps when they go, you know, that's not Canon, you know, yeah, that, that's not, you know, that that's not in our world. Okay. We can't introduce that because that, that contradicts, you know, all this other stuff and, and things like that, because I think that's one of their big problems that they're running into right now is they're, they're so all over the place. It's like the writers don't talk to each other and things that have been established in the walking dead and even in world beyond and, and, and even within the show itself, they're not following the, the rules that they've made for their world mm-hmm. consistently. Yeah, I definitely think that the whole end of the world scenario, the whole bomb, th- you know, I think that whole thing was wrong. They shouldn't have gone that route at all. Like the nuclear bomb. They should they yeah. shouldn't have done it. They should have did something else altogether, honestly. You know, or they could have at the very end or at the very last minute, you know, basically thwarted the whole thing. Yeah. You know, and and, and it, it didn't and go never off. let it go off, kind of thing. Exactly. Uh huh. You know, but apparently, I, I was reading something somewhere that basically the 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 writers just went, "Oh yeah, someone just kind of threw out the idea." We went, "Oh, that sounds cool." Okay, really? Well, it's these showrunners, you know, I guess the showrunners, <laughs> which is you know, in the comments we're hearing, they gotta go, and I kind of agree. So these two showrunners are making the, the decisions you know what i mm-hmm. mean so um they're pulling the trigger on these dumb storylines and they need to go back to the drawing board like because they're yeah. just not being consistent yeah you know they're throwing things out Ooh, we'll drop a nuclear bomb that'll be interesting yeah don't. No, that's gonna be dumb as shit man let's see so cleo says in the comments give me a series with judith and rj grimes I'm going to say, I hate to say it, Cleo, but I don't want to see that unless they're full ass grown ups. I don't want to see them as kids with their own show. <laughs> it's going to yeah. be like World Beyond. You know, they're not going to know how to write for them and it'd be good because they're going to be too young. They need yeah. to be like full on, like we're in our 20s now. People, you know, maybe it's a t- future, you know, this is the future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now we can deal with whatever but i would never want to see them be a lead of a show as teens or children i can't they would not know what to do we already know they don't know what to do with ya stories yeah not in a good way you know and the thing of it is is it's not that i hate a lot you know hate uh, yaya stories because i i I read yaya stories i watch yaya shows Mm -hmm. you know but the the way they have been written in the in, in this you know in in the walking dead world is it's not good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's see. We have another comment. Grimes girl says fear needs to get it together. Do a time jump with a clean slate so that they can move on and catch up to the mothership and end in a way that makes sense. But my expectations aren't too high. I Same. agree with you. Yeah. They never do that. Cause they want to run this until the wheels fall off. Yeah. You know, I think a time jump would make a lot of sense because they could jump us out of all the misery we're dealing with now. Mm-hmm. Um, they could even just dump some of the characters that are shitty. Yeah. And that just... was another thing that, that uh, I, I've been hearing a lot of complaints about is that there's too many. There, mm-hmm. There's too many, quote unquote, main characters. Mm-hmm. And, and I And I think that's true because we don't, we don't really spend a whole lot of time with any particular people anymore, or even any particular group. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we've, we've got, we've got them scattered all over the place and everything else. And I mean, it's not, again, it's not that like, you know, the walking dead doesn't have a big cast of characters. They do, but it's small enough that, you know, and contained enough that, that we're, you know, keeping in touch with all the main character, yeah, the main people. Like, for example, Morgan's character, right? They brought him over here to kind of save the show, right? Mm -hmm. And for a while, he had the spotlight. And it seems like now they're just having him take a seat. So they could do things with uh, these other characters. They're not utilizing 
Lenny James properly. And I don't no. know if that's just because he wants to be behind the camera more than in front of the camera. I don't know. But I feel like if you want to use him to improve the show, then do that. And by having him take a seat or, you know, a back seat, it's, I don't know. I feel like you're not using him. No, I, I don't think so either. You know, I mean, so far we've seen him, you know, briefly at the end following Alicia around as she, you know, raved, raved on and on about her fever dreams. <coughs> and that's really all we had, you right. know, and then, you know, sending out a 13 year old girl to do reconnaissance. Mm hmm. Exactly. <laughs> and even I feel like, you know, Coleman Domingo's character, you know, Strand, I feel like with him being gone the last, you know, little bit of episodes, mm -hmm. they're, I don't know, they're not using him enough, but maybe he'll, they'll all be back in next episode and it'll be some high drama, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. So Karina says in the comments, hold up 11 B of TWD did a horrible job of distributing the screen time. Eh. Yeah. Honestly, TWD has had a lot of stumbles, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> they've had a lot of stumbles, but they've just had pockets of where they do, they bring it back and people are like, oh, it's good again. Mm -hmm. So they've had stumbles off and on throughout this entire thing, to be honest. Um, yeah. Old school fear fans hate Morgan. <sighs> I guess I wasn't. A, I mean, I watched it from the beginning, but y'all, you know, I guess I'm not a fan like that. I mean, I feel like I'm a big enough fan being that I sit here and talk about this every single week. I consider myself a fan, but I'm not that type of fan, I guess. Like, why would you hate like somebody who is bringing more to the show? I just don't understand that philosophy i don't get yeah. it well i mean and if, if they hadn't have brought brought morgan on we wouldn't be having this particular show because i would have refused that they had left you know what's her name alive and well and in charge well let's see so grimes girl says in the comments they hate that morgan became the lead instead of alicia that sounds like a little bit I wonder why. I don't want to make any assumptions why that is. But, I mean, Alicia's character wasn't all of that back then. I mean, no. she's kind of annoying now. So Yeah. I, I mean, I, I never really cared much for any of the, the original cast. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and there's not many of them left. I mean, there's Strand, um, Alicia. Hmm. I think those are the only two, aren't they? Right now, from the original first season. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. I think wasn't what's his face in the first season? Oh my god, what's his name? I just saw him in the preview for this upcoming week. Um, the guy oh, who cuts hair and has yeah. a cat. I can't remember his name right now. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think he was. I don't remember. You know, yeah. but like I said, I I watched the. Daniel, first thanks, half. Karina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I watched the first half of the first of the first season. And I just I hated everybody. Mm -hmm. I hated every single person. I hated the mom. I hated the dad. I hated the kids. I liked the heroin addict. Yeah, and that I, father and, was awful. When he died, I was so happy. Yeah. I was like, good riddance. <laughs> you know, so I mean, and, and the fact that the only person I liked in there was the heroin addict is like, no, I can't watch this. I can't watch it for this one guy that I don't particularly care for much for either, but you know, he's the least offensive. Yeah. And you know, and it wasn't until they, they um, got rid of a lot of, a lot of the original cast members and brought in like Morgan and stuff and John and these, these new characters. And I went, okay, I'll give it another shot. And, and I, and I liked it. And now they're wanting to basically kind of revert back to the originals, I guess. Yeah, you know, they're, like, they're going backwards and it's not it's not going to be good. I have a feeling it's not going to be good. I mean, I, I don't know why some of the diehard fans, I'll call them the diehard fans, they have like this idea stuck in their mind of how they want this show to be. And if it's not exactly how they think it should be, they're like all upset. So for some reason, they just loved, 
you know, her character. I don't know why. Some reason I, they just loved Alicia from the, you know, back then. I don't know why. I, you know, I've always thought of Alicia as kind of this weak willed, kind of wishy washy character. I've, I've never, I've never really thought of her as much of anything, you know. Um, her and Strand's relationship I thought was kind of weird. And, you know, and the fact is, a Strand is, he's never been. He's never even really been, I mean, a good guy. Um, I mean, I don't know. He's just been this weird, very selfish, very self-centered, very nauseating character. Well, Strand has always been in the gray, as far as yeah. I can remember. He's always been, even back when they were on that boat, right? They were trying <laughs> to figure out. Where they were trying to go, he had motive his own. He's always had his own agenda, always. Yeah, from day one. But he has increasingly gotten more outrageous mm -hmm. <laughs> as time goes on. He's drank more and more of the Kool Aid, his own Kool Aid, his own Kool Aid. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and this this rivalry that's apparent between him and Morgan is it's all entirely of Strand's creation. Right. Morgan has never really had anything. I mean, he, he's never really cared much for Strand, but you know, the, the, the absolute hatred between them is really all on Strand. Morgan was like, you do you and I'll do me as long as you're not doing anybody harm. I'm not going right. to step in, do what you do. But now you trying to like steal my baby, steal my, my <coughs> girlfriend, you know, <laughs> You're trying to steal my people and <clears throat> cause havoc. So now I got to do something about it kind of thing. And yeah. he started that. He started it. Mm -hmm. You know, Strand started it. So, you know, uh, and even you know, the bombs going off is Strand. It's, it's Strand's fault. Yeah. You know, he had to make that big hero play and, and wasted all that time fighting with Morgan. And like, he tried to kill you. <laughs> he tried to kill you, Morgan. He tried to kill you. You know, so, yeah, you know, so, yeah, I mean, this whole thing is entirely of his own making and, and oh, I'm the good guy. No, Strand, you're, you go sit down. You're not the good guy. He's delusional. Now, what I do wonder, though, like looking ahead to finally end this, what is it going to take? Is Strand going to have to die? Are they actually going to kill him? Or will he actually like realize what an asshole he is and make an about face? I don't know. I hope they kill him. Mm -hmm. I mean, just straight up, you know, maybe, maybe him and Madison can kill each other off. That'd, that'd be awesome. <laughs> that won't happen. I I'm just saying, you know, the, yeah. the power struggle between the two of them and yeah, I'd be okay with that. Yeah from the very beginning so this is cleo's comment from the very beginning strand was all about strand he couldn't even kill himself when his boyfriend died yeah i remember that yeah yeah i don't know i do wonder so. though i kind of okay i like i really like the actor that plays victor strand but i agree that he might need to die for this to finally move on like can we move on because Victor is Victor and he's never going to change. I mean, it would take something out unbelievable. It would take a force of nature to change him. And hell, a damn nuclear bomb couldn't change him. So, I don't know. He is what Cleo he is. likes my idea. <laughs> yeah, she says uh, Madison Strand dueling to the end. But that would mean they would have to both have to be around all the way to the end of the show. Which who knows when that is. Yeah. You sure so, you want that? <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, because I really feel like they are going to make this show until the wheels fall off. Like yeah. until the ratings are so bad and nobody is watching, will they only consider dropping it? Or if one of these spinoff shows performs so exceptionally well that they no feel they no longer need it. Yeah. Yeah, well, Maybe. Mm. well i guess we'll just have to see i mean really the yeah. the, the real test is going to be after the walking dead wraps yes that that's going to be it'll be the the season after that 
on on Fear the Walking Dead is when we're really going to find out. Because I do have some theories that, and I've been saying this, it just hasn't happened yet. And they will have to time jump again to align themselves with the Walking Dead again. Because I feel like some of those Walking Dead characters could also end up on Fear. Yeah. So they'd have to align the time. Yeah, I mean, I've I've thought about that too. I mean, they could, you know, they could have a few drift over there, mm-hmm. um, you know. But I don't know. I I, I really, the, the my my biggest issue right now with Fear the Walking Dead is the lack of consistency and and really the lack of cohesive storytelling. You know, they're they're telling these little one offs. You know, that really aren't going anywhere, aren't doing anything, and it's it's just it's not filling me with hope that that this enterprise is going to last much longer after fear the walking dead or the walking dead wraps was this season five that morgan was brought on to this show was this season five y'all four or five i don't remember now yeah because i just remember like we really really enjoyed fear the walking dead for a while there Mm mm-hmm we really enjoyed this. We thought it was a better show than TWD at, at one point. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> yeah. I Honestly, I'm going to go with, uh, since slightly before they, they set off the nuclear bomb is when I started to, I felt that things were starting to go off the rails. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we come back in and, you know, with the nuclear holocaust and stuff. And I'm like, this doesn't, none of this makes any sense. This is no. bad writing, you know? <laughs> yeah. So here's um, a prediction in the comments. Grimes Girl says, after TWD ends, I think it's going to sink like a rock even more than it already is. Oh. Yeah. So we might, guys, we might have to all find a new series thing that we all love i don't know i don't know i guess i mean i'm trying to stay hopeful but man i feel like the community at large is like i don't know what's gonna happen i don't know what's gonna happen i don't either yeah i mean i i just you know we've all invested a lot of time and energy into the show and i'm just i'm these last two episodes i'm just so disappointed with them i know i'm really hoping that everyone in the comments that said episode 11 is fire. I'm really hoping I agree with y'all for real. I need a win. <laughs> yeah. So I need a win. All right. I think we're done. What do you think, Lisa? Yeah, we should wrap this up. All right. So it's been a fun conversation. Thanks so much for everyone who is live chatting with us on this episode. We appreciate you for being here. If you are listening on the recap, we appreciate you for listening to this entire episode that helps us out a lot. So before you go on whatever platform you're on, throw us a like, a follow, a subscribe, whatever it is on whatever platform you're on. We would appreciate that. And we'll catch you guys next week. Take care, guys.